Good morning. Let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously hear the prayers of those who call upon you, we ask, O Lord, and forgive the sins of those who confess to you, granting us in your kindness both pardon and peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, this is no reason for me to boast, for an obligation has been imposed on me, and woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have a recompense, but if unwillingly, then I have been entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my recompense? That when I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so as to win over as many as possible. I have become all things to all, to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I too may have a share in it. Do you not know that the runners in the stadium all run in the race, but only one wins the prize? Run so as to win. Every athlete exercises discipline in every way. They do it to win a perishable crown, but we an imperishable one. Thus, I do not run aimlessly. I do not fight as if I were shadow boxing. No, I drive my body and train it for fear that after having preached to others, I myself should be disqualified. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told his disciples a parable. Can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? No disciple is superior to the teacher, but when fully trained, every disciple will be like his teacher. Why do you notice the splinter in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the wooden beam in your own? How can you say to your brother, Brother, let me remove that splinter in your eye? when you do not even notice the wooden beam in your own eye. You hypocrite. Remove the wooden beam from your eye first. Then you will see clearly to remove the splinter in your brother's eye. The Gospel of the Lord. There are some realities that are universal. And I'm not going to get into a heavy-duty theological or philosophical statement. I'm going to get much simpler than that. It would be generally agreed upon, for instance, that I am wearing green. Now, there are probably 87,000 names for this color green. All you need to do is go to a paint store to realize that you never knew how many greens there could be. But let's just say that it's generally accepted that this would be considered in the ballpark of green, whatever you specifically call it. Now, there are some things that can change that if a person happens to be colorblind, or if it's really dark, or very bright. It might obscure our ability to see green, but it is, in fact, there. So we live in a world where there are givens. And we accept that. And we work with that. Otherwise, we couldn't communicate to each other. If I couldn't say to someone who was out picking out napkins, well, the tablecloth is green. Get something that matches or complements. We'd have a hard time, and that's just a very simple example. So we've come to accept those universals. But I believe there are some things that are rising to a level that we've almost, in a sense, begun to presume that they are universals that can't be changed. I'm not going to go out and start a campaign to change this to orange. We're going to not, that's not going to get very far. But one of those universals, or one of those wannabe 
universals that I'm seeing more and more evidence of is hatred. It's almost becoming accepted that a legitimate response to another person is hatred. It's one of the many responses we can make, but it's like, okay. It's almost being accepted that that hatred is becoming so pervasive that what can I do to change it? It's almost like we're being swept down a raging river. And we say there's no way to grab onto a branch on the side, there's no way to paddle upstream, there's no way to do anything but just go along with the flow and try to get as little damage to ourselves as possible, but still allow it to happen. And I believe in doing that, we become complicit with the hatred, and we magnify the hatred. In a sense, it can become a self-fulfilling prophecy. And when confronted with hatred, we always take it in the macrocosm world, like, well, everybody's out there and they're all hating each other. What can I do? It's too big for me. St. Paul, in his letter to the Corinthians today, basically says, you know what? Each one of us is running our own race. And there will be people faster than us. There will be people slower than us. There might be people who train harder or less hard than us. That's immaterial. Each one of us is running our own race. And ironically, even though he calls out that there's one prize, what he really is saying is there's really only one prize we should be running toward, which is eternal life. He says, I drive my body and train it for fear that after having preached to others, I myself should be disqualified. And so when we look at this pervasive hatred, and our first response is to point fingers, I would say that's a cop-out, that's an easy response. Yes, it's easy to identify hatred. in other people. The challenge for us is to follow the gospel and say, if I have a beam in my own eye, I've got to take it out before I can take out a splinter from somebody else's eye. And to be absolutely honest with you, if you just told me you took a beam out of your own eye, I don't want you messing with a splinter in my eye. That doesn't sound like a good plan. Sit for a while, let it heal before you go doing splinter removal. We commemorate today 9-11 and the senseless deaths of thousands of people. And not to diminish that particular day, 
But each and every day in our world, there are senseless deaths created by hatred and anger and violence. Innocent people battered in that stream of hatred. So what's the answer? The answer isn't to look at that macrocosmic problem, throw up our hands and say, what can I do? I don't control the world. The answer lies in what St. Paul tells each of us today. No, you can't fix the macrocosm, but you can fix the microcosm. Remember, we're each running our own race. And we each have input as to how we run that race and what we do. And before we go to comment about someone else's reality, we need to take a moment and do a gut check of our own reality. If we are going to stem the tide of that raging river of hatred, we have to stop and take account of our own reality. Hatred can be overt and obvious, and it can be covert and insidious. We may have preconceived ideas about realities that we have learned for years that we need to rethink. It's like when you bring a group a new idea and they say, we've never done it that way before. Okay. Well, at some point, Henry Ford said, you're all using horses. I have an idea. No, they never did it that way before. But guess what? We need to do that in our self-examination. If we are going to stem the tide of that hatred, it is going to come from that microcosmic change that each of us make in ourselves. And gradually, just ever so gradually, one person at a time lessens the surge of that river. I think at the end of our race, God is going to ask us, how did you help? How did you respond? How did you change? How did you change? If 9-11 does anything for us. It should be a clarion call for us to examine how we live our lives. If we don't want that ever to happen again in any circumstance, in any way, shape, or form, either in that tremendously horrid large scale as was that September day, We have to start on that local, most local of levels. Who I see today, who I talk to today, who I speak about today, and how I do that. Imagine the combined force of a world moving away from hate.
It's overwhelming, isn't it? Starts with us. Take the beam from our, from our own eye before we do anything else for someone else. Let us pray for all those lost on 9 11 for their families and friends. But let us add to those prayers to all victims of hatred of any kind. And let us pray for ourselves that we recommit ourselves this day to run a race Everyone, everyone is heading toward the same finish line together. Let us present our needs to our loving God, confident God will hear them. For the church throughout the world, may God continue to bless, purify, and sanctify her in building his kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in public office. May God bless their efforts in defending the dignity and sanctity of life from conception through natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For victims of violence, war, and hatred, may the Lord grant them healing and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those gathered here, may God, who is love, Grow in us an ever greater spirit of compassion and love for one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, may they rejoice forever in the presence of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we ask you to hear these prayers and those we hold within our hearts. We ask that you answer them in the name of Jesus, your Son, and our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, that being moved to compassion, you may both pardon our offenses and direct our wavering hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offering and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love for your Son, who alone is just, handed him over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread and giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through the blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice, filled with the fruit of the vine and once more giving thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The 
a mystery of faith. We Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead and looking forward to his coming. We offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and Edward our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom. Until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us here and across the way offer to each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy 
that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For Holy Communion today, how about we start with this side, and then I'll do this side. Let us pray.
Grant us, merciful God, that receiving in this gift the forgiveness of sins, we may be able, by your grace, to avoid sinning from now on and to serve you in sincerity of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Mind you that the cathedral will be live streaming the Saturday 4.30 p.m. Vigil Mass for Sunday. The diocese will be live streaming a different Mass Sunday morning. But if you want the local flavor, that'll be Saturday night, and then it'll be out there for all the world after the 4.30 Mass. Secondly, uh, today is Friday. You probably knew that already. And uh, so we have our Friday surprise, which uh, Katie will introduce right after the liturgy. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Blessed weekend, everyone.